Severe major flooding is being experienced in the Burnett catchment. Major flooding continues at Bundaberg. Extremely large major flooding is also occurring at Mandabra. And again, the extreme river rise has um, been recorded in the Upper Burnett River with major uh, flooding planes, uh, have taken a, a total of 97 patients. And major patients flooding has peaked at 23 metres. There's urgent need uh, to Brisbane. The floods that uh, impacted the Bundaberg region in 2013 were the largest in history. There'd been history of floods before, no doubt about it, but this one was the big one. And you know, it sort of gets a little bit lost in the stories. Uh, about five tornadoes, numerous tornado-like events on top of that, and a storm surge. So it was you know, lots of things going on at once over a period of days, and the way it impacted the community was significant. The major flooding has peaked at 23 metres at Mandabra early this morning, which is slightly below the 19 well, Our evacuation centres here are um, becoming flooding. Um, very full cool, very quickly. It, it was really unbelievable. It was surreal. It was like uh, I'd landed on a different planet. Nothing looked the same. Everything smelt different. Um, there was a lot of shock in the community. This is as a result of that deluge, and I, I understate that when I say deluge. 2013, um, we'd already had 2010-11, so I guess people were, look, I know what to do, I know what to expect. These have been classified not just as a major flood, but this is an extreme flood. Uh, when 2013 happened, I guess we were shocked. You think natural disasters and you think you understand what it looks like when you see it on the news, but when it actually affects you personally, yeah, it really brings it home and it, it just turns your world upside down. Creative recovery is about bringing the arts to communities to help them share their stories and make connections back into their community again. That's the surface level, but underneath it's very much about making those personal connections with people and allowing in their personal healing journey. Originally Creative Regions got involved back after the 2010-2011 floods um, through the Flexible Funding Program which came available through local government. So we saw an opportunity to trial some different programs in the community, namely um, some ephemeral public art and digital storytelling workshops. And then after 2013 the state government invested further in what we were doing, which was fantastic. So we were able to spread what we were doing across five local government areas instead of just one and we'd already tried a couple of different models of, of creative recovery processes and we discovered a lot more. Often we're just, as a council, we're talking about um, just the emotional issues with people and, and you know, family stress and, and different um, problems within, within relationships. But with a community recovery event, you have the whole of community and you have neighbourhoods, you have individuals, you have the families um, and they've all been traumatised. And uh, you know that's where it's really important to have programs or opportunities for people to actually just connect and hear one another's story and begin to understand. I learn a lot about what creativity can do. Um, I started off very much with this project saying I'm not creative, I don't know how to be creative, I'm here to do project management. Um, but along the way I definitely saw the benefits and how it can help people, how it can break down barriers and allow people I guess in a non-intrusive environment to, to deal with what they've been through. You know many people would say and I even felt it myself, gee I'm not terribly creative, art's not my thing. But uh, the facilitators made it very easy and so people just began to play and they began to have fun together. Not everyone's into art and culture but uh, I think that uh, that uh, aspect of the recovery pro process through a float was extremely positive for our region. We identified what a float offered to the community very early on. In fact, we identified it after the 2010 flood, which was a, a much smaller scale flood than what we saw in 2013. So we, we caught on pretty quick then. Uh, this is a way to help bring the community back together help those different segments of the community that maybe haven't had a good chance to talk about what it means to them to be impacted by a disaster. When you've been through a trauma, you have sensations that have happened in your body. You can feel it, uh, but you haven't actually put it into words. So you haven't actually begun to tell yourself the story about it. All you know is that you, you feel anxious, uh, you feel stressed. 
for a lot of people, they didn't want to talk about what they ha had happened. It was quite hard to believe they'd, what they'd been through. Um, but for them, it was a way of them to talk about it, to not bottle it up, to, to deal with what they've been through. And some of those stories were quite horrific. Unless you deal with um, emotional things from the trauma straight away when they're coming up, it can lead to long-term health problems. Working in a, a sympathetic way with art um, really gives people an opportunity to take those images and actually start putting some language around it. It's a very narrative approach. People tend to think that there's a flood and it's over, the water's gone, where the big picture is, sorry, but across the road, people don't have houses. And look, there are four stages when we talk about disaster management, it's you know, prevention, preparedness, response and recovery. And we know recovery can happen, you know, it's the first bit of time after, but it's years after. When we're talking about a major event that affects a the community, there are people that are dealing with the impacts of that for many years. I work for a local media organisation in town, the ABC, so during the floods and the tornadoes I was out a lot taking uh, photos and getting information to people, meeting lots of the people during the natural disaster. So uh, after it had all finished, uh, I was uh, dealing with a lot of emotions that I'd seen from that, so sort of post-traumatic stress disorder I suppose to a degree, or shell shock as it used to be called and one of the ways I dealt with a lot of the emotions was to just go and, and walk around uh, Bundaberg North and take photos and I didn't know why I was doing it, I just needed, I needed to do something to get rid of a lot of that, that emotion. There was a lot of discussion around this exhibition because we realised that it would definitely hit a raw nerve for our community and debate arose around, well, when is a good time to commemorate something? When is, it a, a, when is the best time to start memorialising? At what point has a community moved on far enough to be able to look back? So we were really sort of sensitive to that and we discussed it a lot, but we couldn't get past the importance of holding this for our community and how important it is to do. And we couldn't overlook the quality of the work and the sensitivity of the work. I think the exhibition is really important because it documents the length of a community takes to recover from a natural disaster. We're seeing more and more natural uh, climate related events occurring and it's important that people understand they don't happen in just, you don't clean up just one day. The buildings may get, and the rubbish may get cleared away, but the emotional scars take a long time to heal. The, the emotional things may not even happen at the flood. So in six months time, the emotions could start coming out then. A year later, they can start coming out. Um, a lot of people don't even feel anything. They're just so much in the, let's get this done, and they're very you know, proactive. Um, and for some people, they're quite resilient and they get through that. And then later on, they just become exhausted. Recovery plans never really have a time frame on them. But in the relation to the human social area, often that does take a lot longer. A lot of people's emotions and their feelings and uh, how they might have been uh, socially isolated through such an event, it just takes them time to get re-established and to be reconnected in the community. I think it takes at least 18 months, six to 18 months for people to get back to some form of normality. It's not the same normal as it was before the floods, it's a different normal. Although you can fix infrastructure quickly and with funding, um, you know, that, that's a process that happens. It's actually people's lives and how they're dealing with the new, their new life because it's never going to be the same as it was. I work um, with quite a few farmers, uh, people in the farming community, community in this district, and they, they, they always survive, they always do. When you're in, on the land, you always look after yourself. You might help a neighbour, but you, you'll never admit defeat. And you keep going, because that's what you've always done, and, and the, the weather and the land is difficult, so you've been raised that way. Sometimes we feel like we are in isolation and that um, no one understands what we're going through or been through and uh, especially for the communities, the farming communities that are more isolated geographically, 
I think it's important for them to be able to hear that other people have gone through something similar. Arts projects should definitely be involved with the um, community recovery of any traumatic event. Um, I was concerned that it, it might re-traumatise people, um, but it's done in such a fun atmosphere and such a collaborative atmosphere that it's actually quite healing. Well, the arts is involved really from the very beginning, but in the long term it's about encouraging people to share their stories. That's the main component. If people aren't able to share their stories and start their debriefing process, it, it, it speeds up their recovery if they're able to do that. Sometimes it's not easy to put in words either for, for different people how they feel about an event. It's, it's not the right thing to do to make it explicit with words, it needs to be done some other way. Sometimes it's okay just to sit in a room with a few people and hear, or they hear their story and just nod your head and say, yeah, I get it. I went in with an open mind but really uncertain about what it was all going to be about. But uh, yeah, I'm quite sold. Every single project that's happened at, in arts recovery, watch the people's faces coming in and then have a look at the people's faces going out. I can describe it in one word, smile. It's very difficult for people in regional areas to get access to this sort of um, program and the fact that it actually comes out to us, even though we're a small school in a remote area, is just fantastic. And the parents are coming today to have a look and see what these kids are learning and the kids are just bursting with energy, like the, the excitement has been bubbling over for the last few days, it's just incredible. Um, the Float Project has allowed us to come um, up to regions like Bundaberg and Lower Gladstone and bring something like circus into those communities which helps with team building, resilience um, and fun and creativity. I think probably with Bundaberg we've had the two natural disasters and I've been affected with both businesses um, as I have two businesses and the arts have really been there to uplift um, and make the children feel a lot happier so we got back into our teaching as soon as the floods had affected the business and I think that was great morale for the students. So some of the new skills I've learnt from the circle workshop, um, I've learnt how to do my back handspring properly and getting into it and learning how to do forward rolls and backward rolls properly because I never used to be able to do them properly um, and just learning how to do my old tricks but properly and in the way they do in the circus instead of dance. It's been a really great experience for the children. Um, both of the dance girls that are involved here um, do acrobatics, so it's been a way that they've been able to explore different avenues. Um, the girls have been great. Um, the children have responded, and it's been a, a really positive thing for the dance school. The new skills I've learned with circa uh, the hula hoops, the throwing, the body juggling, and a whole lot more. Uh, the thing I've most enjoyed working with the Float Project would be, I guess, if we didn't have them, we wouldn't be able to come out to these communities and work with the kids. And the kids are our priority. We want to work with the kids. We want to be able to make them smile day to day. We want to teach them something new. We want them to learn almost in an environment that's really fun, but at the same time, they're learning. We could set up seminars and go, yes, um, come and listen to this. We're going to talk to you about emotional health, about you know, physical sensations in the body, neuroscience, mindfulness, um, come along. And everyone's going to go, what? We don't even know what you're talking about. But you say, look, if we're going to come have a cup of tea, we're going to do some crocheting, we're going to do some weaving, we, we might do some art and get our hands dirty, um, all that sort of stuff. It's like, oh yeah, I can do that.
Through adversity, often a lot of good comes, but a lot of that good is the interrelationships that are created. Over the last three years, there's been many, many positives and uh, it has changed their lives in many respects. One of the fun projects we thought we'd trial was a placemaking project and it started out with us identifying some places where we really wanted to go in and do something spontaneous and create an arts project that nobody really knew about. It's a bit of a guerrilla project and eventually we went, oh we need some music to this and that's when we first made a connection with Carl Wachner and his song Simple Pleasures that was written about the floods. So that ended up becoming the basis for the storyline behind what we did. These days I find myself just walking down the street Carrying a heavier load than I'm supposed to be And then I look around and I see their faces Look a lot like me But they don't understand that when the world comes in It takes the colour from our innocence And it stirs it in a grey And it paints the prison in our lives yeah. These days I find myself just walking down the street Wondering how we're going to get back to what we used to be um, Creative recovery programs are a vital part of any recovery process. The arts is a way of bringing people back to their community. Trauma caused by natural disasters disconnects people from their everyday life, disconnects people from the people around them and having an arts project just gets people talking and reconnecting back into their community and that is ultimately the most important thing. It helps to um, prevent depression, helps to build the community's resilience. Connectedness with your community is vital. As human beings we need that, we need that connection, we need to know we belong. I believe arts and recovery bring togetherness. I'd certainly look forward to, well I don't look forward to another disaster, but I certainly look forward to working in, in that way, that collaborative way between um, human service kind of organisations and arts organisations. I think they have a lot to offer each other working together. Um, I've never really been involved with a project that has such an, a connection with the community. For me, I guess I'll, I'll never forget this project. Um, I still think there's a lot more work that can be done. I think there always is, but I think it's, it's very hard to, to measure a project like this. But the ongoing benefits um, are just incredible. When you think about resilience, it's, you know, it's, it's not just about bouncing back, it's about actually being a bit tougher for the next one as well. And I think you know, that's an opportunity where the, the person, an individual says, well, here are some of the things that I've got within my capacity right now. I can eyeball the things that really hurt me last time and I can move forward and this is how I'm going to do that. I think some of the projects that we've seen through the Afloat uh, program has done exactly that.